want, wanted to spend some time talking about domain and range of functions because before we talked about how it was just the x and just the y values, it's still just that. But domain and range with functions, you have to think, okay, what x's are we allowed to plug in here? And what y's come out as a result of plugging them in? And so, our, our domain for a linear function here, we can take any x we want to and plug it in here. And so our domain is going to be all real numbers. Real numbers are just all of those numbers on the number line. We can plug in any single thing we want. And range, you have to think about what the y value comes out as. This is a line, slope of 2, y-intercept of negative 3. And so if you think about what the graph might look like real quick, it's going to look like this. So it's going to keep going forever and ever in this direction, forever and ever in this direction. And so you can tell the domain and the range is also all real numbers. It's going to change in these other ones. 1 minus x squared. Domain, x's, we're not restricted at all with x's. We're going to see some restrictions when we talk about the square root. But So this is still all real numbers. And so I'm going to use the symbol just to shorten this a little bit. It kind of looks like the paragraph symbol in English class, uh, just with the double line but with an r. represents all real numbers. The range, you have to remember what this 1 minus x squared graph looks like. If you prefer negative x squared plus 1, it's a parabola that opens down and has gone up 1. And so a parabola looks like this. Our y values have a max. And so our y values are going to all be below or equal to that point. So the highest the y values get are positive 1, and so all our y values, or our range, are less than or equal to 1. Um, these two are functions we're going to be dealing with a little bit later, but we want to remember the domain for a square root function. Square roots were restricted a little bit because, at least on the real number line, we can't take the square roots of negatives. And so x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0 what's underneath the square root. And so if you solve that, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And that's our domain. You'll notice that you, you see your graph looks like that. And we're going to be talking about how our square root graph looks like that. It's got to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Don't worry about where the graph comes from so much as because we're going to be dealing with that later on this unit. And then the y values, when you plug in negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And so they start at 0, and so our y values are only greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to skip this function as far as the, the range goes, but I want to talk about the domain. This is called a rational function. Again, ra rational because it's a ratio. And the only problem with this is we can't divide by 0. It's impossible. And so anytime the denominator equals 0, it's not going to be in our domain. So it's going to be all real numbers except x can't equal negative 3. Because when x plus 3 equals 0, if x equals negative 3, we get 0. And we, ha we can't divide by 0. Again, we'll come back to the range on this one because we're going to need to know a little bit more about functions and a little bit and make a little more sense. So, luckily, the next part's very, very easy. We dealt with adding and subtracting and multiplying last chapter a ton. And so, all we're going to have to notice is that given that f of x is 3x and g of x is x minus 5, and so those are just names of functions. It's like Fred and George. And so sh this is shorthand for saying add the 3x plus the x minus 5. And so really what it's saying is take 3x plus x minus 5, and we get 3x plus x minus 5. We combine some like terms, and we get 4x minus 5. The domain of this one? This is a linear function, and so the domain of this one is going to be all real numbers. Subtraction. 
So we do f of x minus g of x. 3x minus x minus 5. Just be careful with this one like we did with our polynomials that this is 3x minus an x, but it's also minus a negative 5. So it really turns out to be plus 5. 3x minus x is 2x plus 5. Multiplication, again, same deal, but we're going to multiply 3x times x minus 5. So we have just a little distributive property here. 3x times x is 3x squared, and 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. And so we have a quadratic again. Again, both of these, this one was linear again, and so the domain was all real numbers. that We, we could plug in any x we wanted to. Any x goes into quadratics as well. What's going to change here is the range. This is going to open up, and it's going to have a minimum value, so the range would be y is greater than or equal to some point. And then f of x divided by g of x is just going to be our 3x divided by x minus 5. And since that can't be divided, we just leave it like that. That's its simplified form. And the domain, again, just like we talked about, was x minus 5 set equal to 0. x can't equal 5, because when you plug in 5, it's going to be everything except that. So all real numbers except x can't equal 5. All right. So, continuing a little bit with the domain that we talked about before. x squared plus 4x plus 5. This is going to be all real numbers. Not a problem. On the last one, the square roots had to be greater than or equal to 0. And so, x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And so, our domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 3 if you subtract the, neg the 3 to both sides. So domain it has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. If you plug in a negative 4, negative 4 doesn't work because you get a negative 1. Square root of negative 1 is not a real number. And then x minus 4 is on the bottom. Can't divide by 0. x minus 4 set it equal to 0. Solve. Add the 4 to the other side. You get x equals 4. And so the domain is... All real numbers except x cannot equal 4 because that causes us to divide by 0.